Welcome to Never Too Late for Fitness Radio, bringing baby boomers proven strategies and innovative products for getting fit, staying fit, so you can live a longer, healthier, and happier life. Here's your host, best-selling author and fitness advocate, Phil Ferris. This is Phil Ferris, and welcome to our show. Never Too Late for Fitness Radio provides answers and straight talk about fitness, nutrition, and healthy lifestyles for people over 50. Our goal is to educate and advocate health and fitness strategies that help you to live a longer, healthier, and happier life. On some shows, we feature everyday people like you and me who have acted and reclaimed their health and fitness. We all love a success story, especially if the person is facing the same challenges we are. Hearing real success stories helps inform, motivate, and inspire us to live a healthier life. We have all had senior moments. We walk into a room only to forget why we went there in the first place. Or... We have a word in the tip of our tongue, and we just can't seem to get it out. Fortunately, these incidences happen briefly and infrequently for most people. However, for many people, they define the day, every day. These are people who suffer from brain injuries. In the U.S., every year, about 2.6 million people have some type of brain injury, whether a result of trauma, stroke, tumor, or other illnesses, according to the Brain Injury Association of America. About 52,000 people die as a result of traumatic brain injury, and more than 5 million Americans who have suffered traumatic brain injury require assistance in performing daily activities. My guest today is Brian Hansen, who is an entrepreneur and inventor who became an RN at the age of 57. Two years ago, Brian died, but was sent back from heaven to finish a little work. Today, Brian spends his time working on inventions and speaking about faith and recovery from brain injuries. He brings a unique perspective because as a nurse, he took care of brain injured patients before sustaining his own brain injury. Some would call this ironic, but Brian looks at it as a blessing. Well, thank you, Brian, for being on the show today. Great to be here. Now, for my listeners to get a perspective on the challenges that you and other people with brain injuries have, um, can you describe what your life was like before the big event? Well, uh, I was, I was, I was the doer. I was always physically active. I was class officer going back to kindergarten, class president twice in high school. Um, I was a wrestler, I was a cross country runner, pole vaulter, avid camper, canoeist, you know, I, I, I got out, I lived life to the fullest. But what, what can you remember about the big event that, that changed all that? Well, I don't remember a lot because uh, literally I was, I was a dead man walking before I finally coded. Um, I snored and uh, with my sleep apnea, it literally destroyed my heart muscle. I wasn't getting blood to my brain. And uh, again, I, I wasn't, I literally, I, I was on autopilot. I wasn't thinking, I don't remember anything about the big event other than uh, when I died, I went to hell, didn't like it. Music's bad there. And I went to heaven. I was sent back because I got stuff to do here. Okay. Well, that's, that's inspiring. So, so you were in a coma and uh, what was it like when you finally came out of it? Well, I had to wear what looked like a suicide vest for uh, about six months, an external defibrillator, because my heart was still so weak. Um, um, and I did outpatient physical therapy at the local hospital. Uh, and now I do my own self-guided physical therapy, occupational therapy, because hallelujah, I'm a former rehab nurse for brain injured people at Mary and Joy out in Wheaton, Illinois. And I wear a CPAP every night uh, to compensate for my sleep apnea. Okay, so it was the sleep apnea that caused the lack of uh, oxygen getting to your brain that, that caused you to code. It's, lot, it's why a lot of husbands die before their wives. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and so um, you, you coded, you brought you back, uh, you start this recovery process. What are they doing in physical therapy? What was, what was different? What did you notice? What were the biggest differences that uh, after you coded that you were aware of? 
Well, again, I, 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 my 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 short term memory is still whacked. Uh, I I chart constantly because I my short term memory is limited to about fifteen minutes. Uh, but they uh, uh, got me at, at the physical therapy area of the hospital. They started me on a treadmill, and I think they started me off like walking slowly for three minutes. Uh, by the time I was discharged, I think I was up to, I can't remember how long, but it was half an hour or whatever. And at a, at a, uh, at a faster pace, but faster pace, meaning walking, nothing close to jogging. Uh, it was just a kind of semi fast walk. So they were focusing on just getting you physically strong enough to function on a day to day basis by walking in a treadmill. Exactly. And that's what I do now. I've got a treadmill here. Uh, I have a Schwinn, uh, a vintage Schwinn uh, uh, exercise cycle. And uh, again, I chart it. I make it a point. Every day I do physical therapy and occupational activities. Uh, and uh, I'm still really weak, but I'm really motivated. I want to dig down a little bit into the, the physical part. And I also want to talk a little bit about, did they, in their physical therapy, did they do any anything to uh, address the brain damage? No, no. It was, it was strictly, strictly the, the physical part of it. Um, uh, again, I, I have a copy of an MRI here that shows a big chunk of my brain. It's like, it, it, it looks like your brain is like an IBM PC and one of the, the, the memory cards got pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So memory cards pulled out. So um, let's talk about some of the specific challenges you go through from a day to day basis. And again, I, I don't know if people can appreciate um, that you you know how this can change your day to day life. Um, you know, physically, you say, "Well, I'm still weak," and one of the reasons you're weak is you're uh, several months you know in a hospital and right. you have a lot of atrophy. And uh, as we age, we uh, our muscles atrophy even more rapidly, and we decondition more rapidly. So, you know that's normal for for someone that's not you know laid up in a hospital and uh, uh, recovering from uh, being dead. So, um, talk. Let's talk about some of the some of the specific challenges and kind of walk me through as you became aware of the limitations and how it affected your life and, and what you did about it. Well, number one, again, I got my little notebook and, I, and I, I've got my daily do done data diary and I chart throughout the day to figure out what I have done. I have a list of the stuff I need to do. Otherwise, I won't remember it. And I wear my car hearts all the time because I lost my thermal regulation. I'm, I'm, I'm cold almost all the time until really hot days. And then I have to rip my clothes off because I get too hot. There's like a three degree temperature range where I'm, where I'm comfortable. Okay. And, and you, you, you know, you, you plan accordingly. Give us an example of, of you get up in the morning and you plan. What do you plan? Well, number one, I uh, uh, get the dog out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, I, I grind beans. I make really good coffee. Um, and while that's brewing, uh, I, I, I check my uh, blood pressure and I chart that. I check my blood sugars and chart that. Um, I make sure I eat good food so that, uh, uh, you know, my blood sugars are not out of control. And, and I'm, you know, again, I don't want to, I don't want to get morbidly obese sitting around. So, uh, uh, I, 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 I plan my day and then I, I hit it hard. <laughs> okay. And now you say if you have a, your memory is, span is, is about 15 minutes. How does that uh, impact what you do day to day? Besides the writing things down, what other ways does that affect what you do and how you do it? Well, look, I'm about to do it right now. Um, I cry a lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, this, uh, I, 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 the good news is there are tears of joy. Okay. I cried the six, first six months just being totally depressed. Um, I cry tears of joy. Because had I not taken care of brain injury patients, had I not been a nurse doing rehab, I, w I probably would have been suicidal. I see this now as a huge prank, 
and 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 I'm I'm rolling with it, and I'm I I do everything I can compensate to get back to living my life, to being as productive as possible, and uh, I'm going to go camping. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you made the comment that um, you still have. Uh, to finish a little work that you have things to do that, that you're not, you know, this is kind of a second chance to, um, to live your life and, and do things that you, you'd always want to do. Yet you have, uh, I think you said, uh, God played a prank on you. Um, and you get it. And so now you're, you're rolling with it, and, but you're going to take it and, and run with it. So, so what are some of the things, the, the things, little things, little work that you plan to do with the second chance? Well, it, it, I'm the luckiest guy to walk planet Earth. It's just amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, I've, 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 I've been through the Orient long ago. Uh, I, I did a mission trip saying my way across Uganda, uh, 2004, I think it was. And, um, and I saw a need for uh, improved sanitation uh, and uh, need for clean water, and so I'm I'm working on uh, a, a a very simple, cheap invention that will make life better for a couple billion people. And I and I thought that that was the main reason I was sent back was to finish that up. So I'm I'm slowly working on that. Um, and and then the other part is I was introduced to a a, a fellow who was a real high flyer until his car accident and brain injury. And he was never able to work again. And, 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 and involved with a group called Bison, uh, which is the brain injury support, operational, neurological, whatever. You, you, they, 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 there's a Facebook thing. And I want to go out and speak on their behalf uh, about people with brain injuries from the perspective of a person who took care of brain injury patients before his brain injury. I've learned a lot, boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> From that perspective of the, the, the registered nurse um, and, and taking care of brain, what were some of the things that you learned, specific lessons that uh, have helped you as you are on this journey of your own recovery? Uh, well, you know, something I've, I've relearned from the lesson I, I, I've taken with all my life, uh, thanks to my mom and dad. And uh, my motto is never, 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 never give up. And, um, and, and whether it's being physically fit, because if you aren't physically fit, odds of you dying are, you know, go way up. And if you have a job to do, sometimes you just have to keep your nose to the grindstone and, and, uh, 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 you know, Teddy Roosevelt had a, a game he played as a kid you, where you do this thing and, and you go, you know, over, above, around, and through, or whatever, but you never turn back. You continue on your journey. I'm on a, I'm on a mission from God, okay? And I'm going to continue on my journey. I'm motivated. So that's one, you know, never give up is a great lesson. Um, and I, I guess there's probably times when we all say, why'd this happen to me? And especially now with the, the coronavirus and everything that's going on, you know, why me? Why us? Why now? Um, or we can say, gee, um, this is a challenge and I'm going to get through it. Right. Right. So what, what other lessons did your time as, a, as an RN give you that, that you've been able to apply to help you in your journey? Well, again, I've, I've, I was a night on call hospice nurse. I've pronounced more people dead than most people have as Facebook friends. And uh, I tell you, I cried a lot of times. I saw some ugly stuff. And then after my big event, a lot of those people have come back to me and telling me, you got another shot at this. Don't screw it up. And, and we all need to have that lesson. We, you know, we all fail. We're, if you never try, you'll never fail. The key is try and accept your failures, learn from them, move on, live life to the fullest. I got, I got the memo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So you got the memo. Um, and so uh, you, you talked about having goals and, and uh, having a purpose. And, and so tell us about some of the goals that you have 
and how you're going about accomplishing them? Um, well, again, I, I, I try real hard to get organized because otherwise I'd be, I'd be sitting in a wheelchair or, or a chair in the nursing home someplace, uh, you know, drooling on myself. I don't want to do that. I, I want to be active. So I plan accordingly. I plan to work around and overcome whatever disabilities or whatever lack of abilities I may have here. Um, uh, again, I'm, I'm back to working on inventions in my little garage workshop. Uh, I, I, I've been conduit. I'm, <laughs> I do it very slowly, but uh, again, I continue to be motivated to move forward to make not just my life better. I want to make the world a better place. Okay. I'm going to kick the bucket again permanently one of these days. I want to leave the world a better place when I get, when I, they cart me off the anatomy lab. Um, now you mentioned that uh, uh, how your dog is a, is an integral part of uh, your life and your fitness. Uh, talk a little bit about how uh, you use your dog in your day-to-day life. Well, she keeps me honest, <laughs> and, and, and 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 she keeps me on in a on a real schedule, um, uh, which includes I should have gotten out of bed at three o'clock this morning because uh, uh, she wanted to go out. Uh, I didn't want to get out of bed, and I woke up and there's a little uh, memo from her on the floor uh, which I had to <laughs> clean up, and and and. Uh, Look, I, I don't sleep that well anyway. I should have got my butt out of bed and, and stayed on task. So we walk a lot, and, and we try. I try to walk farther every day. Now the snow is melting, and uh, you know we, we look at what a wonderful world we live in. And for as screwed up as things are, uh, you know, if you're into the Chinese stuff, the yin and yang thingy, you know, there, there's bad and good, and there's good and bad. I'm trying to see the good, and I'm trying to make the most of the good. Uh, so, so your dog uh, keeps you on task, gives you a reason to exercise, uh-huh. um, and uh, though you're not as fit as you used to be, uh, you're working towards getting better. So, what what are some of your fitness goals, and what do you see yourself what do you see yourself doing in the future with your fitness? Well, fool that I am, uh, again, I was an okay athlete as a kid and i still remember you know running cross country i still remember being a high school wrestler not a good wrestler but an okay wrestler um and 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 i did my last wrestling tournament it was like 10 years ago oh i got my butt kicked um (laughs) but but you know no guts no glory i did get the uh the award for oldest wrestler somebody else has been getting it ever since I want to get my life to be as normal as possible again, which means I want to be productive. I want to contribute. Uh, uh, I want to be a good example. And, uh, you know, just being out there and, and uh, not being 200 pounds overweight, I think is a really good example. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people understand that, you know, everything that you have and everything you go through on a daily basis presents a challenge because of the, memory issues we've talked we've talked about and the fact that you aren't as strong as you were it is taking longer to get your strength back mm-hmm. uh, and you talk about all right i right, right, walk a mile maybe i'll move a little bit further and it's just gradual progress every day and you even said hey you'd like to start running again oh yeah yeah but again i've, I've got the treadmill and right. i'm using the treadmill i got the exercise bike and i'm using the exercise bike if i wasn't using them There'd be no hope, okay? I wouldn't go anyplace. I've got weights here. I, I, I can't pick up most of them. <laughs> but, but, you know, I get the little weights, and you do a lot, a lot of reps of the little weights, and uh, it helps. It's progress. No guts, no glory. Are there ever times where you, 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 you get down and say, man, this sucks? Oh, absolutely. But, you know, again, you got to pick yourself up. You got to dust yourself off. You got to get back in the race. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I remember a high school coach that we both had. We probably remember his big thing was, you know, winners never quit and quitters never win. Yep. Well, he was right. And uh, what I didn't like was he wanted you to win for him. No, I want to win for me, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, and if I can share my winnings with other people, that's great. 
but you need to be out there to win for yourself so you're capable to share your winnings with other people. Otherwise, what good are you? Okay. You're just taking a place. You're, you know, using somebody else's oxygen. That's not what life's all about. Life is to be lived to the fullest. What suggestions do you have for me helping someone that has brain injury or someone that says, uh, I recently went through and now I have brain injury? What, what, what are the, I guess, the key nuggets you give them, you know, besides to never give up, that um, you would share with your, you know, because you want to share what you've learned so that they can perhaps travel down a similar path you are maybe, you know, and, and accomplish their goals. So what are the, the words of wisdom that you would give them? Well, one rough thing about brain injury is, is that for a guy who's 70 years old, I still present well, I look pretty darn good, but I have a brain injury. And, and most of us who have brain injuries are, have in, this invisible injury and people don't see uh, just how it, it has affected us from our point of view. Um, and, and so, you know, people go, well, gee, what's the matter with you? You know, why don't you do this again? Why don't you do that again? Uh, my brain can't process it. And so I have to do workarounds. I have to do my little, my notes. Otherwise I won't remember what the heck I did today. Um, and, and, uh, so all due respect to Jerry's kids and all the ads on TV for all the, 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 the stuff that's going on in the world. There are lots and lots of brain injured people out there, and we need to kind of team together. We need to get some awareness for brain injury because uh, more of us are surviving these days. You know, if, if I if there hadn't been a ventilator handy when I coded, I would have stayed dead. Um, so we're surviving uh, physically, but uh, mentally, you know, we're we're pretty impaired and. Uh, uh, Again, what you got to do is you pick yourself up, you brush yourself off, you get on. And, 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 and I, I, I focus on the positives. And, and quite frankly, I have unfriended all kinds of old people, friends and stuff like that because they don't get it. They're energy suckers. I don't have the energy to deal with it anymore. You know, it's, it's not something I can debate. All I can do is focus on the positives and, 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 and do it with people who are, are positive. And I encourage everybody, be as positive as you can with everybody you see. One of the things that's interesting about brain injuries um, is that the brain has the ability to develop new, new neural pathways. They're finding this with Alzheimer's. They're finding it with, you know, though it's not easy, um, it, it's easier for younger. When I was young, I was eight years old and I was in a car accident and I had what they called minimal brain damage uh -huh. and it, it caused dyslexia, reading problems. And, uh, you know, I suffered in school, but over time, like five to seven years, the brain learns to overcompensate and, and, you know, the other parts of the brain picks up for the parts that weren't working anymore. So you can do that, but you have to work at it. It's like a muscle. And so they're finding that, you know, you can retrain, rewire, so to speak. Oh, absolutely, positively. Phil, do you remember your ABCs? Sure. And how did you learn your ABCs? Repetition, 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 repetition. Uh, did you sing them? That was another way. Yep. Exactly. Because it uses a different pathway. And as your kid, you're still building a lot of neural pathways as your brain develops. One of the first things you do learn to do is sing. And, and I'll tell you, this jokes me up. I had people who were an advanced Alzheimer, people on their deathbed when I took care of them in my nursing career. People who were nonverbal. And I would sit at bedside and I would sing to them. And all of a sudden, these nonverbal people would start singing along with me. It blew people's minds. But there are many paths to the mountaintop. And, you know, you, 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 you tear this thing or you get a bad rotator cuff or whatever. 
you know, you learn how to do stuff with the with the other arm if you can't lift your <laughs> arm with the torn rotator cup as high as you want. Um, you 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 got to stay in the race, and you got to figure out ways to compensate. And we're a remarkable little creatures. Is that we have this amazing little thing on top of our heads that we don't use to to our, uh, the fullest advantage. And sometimes you need to get whacked upside the head to, to figure out how to use it better. There's multiple ways of getting access to the brain, and, and what happens is we. You know, learn. We learn a way to do things. Oh yeah. And, and so those get kind of hardwired in, and then all of a sudden we've got to change, and we have to develop. It's it's like uh, all of a sudden you're in the forest and and you can't get where you want to go, so you have to forge a new path. Uh huh. The first time you go through it, it's full of brush and it's difficult and it's challenging. You're not sure you're going to get there, and then once you make it, then you say, "Well, I'll do it again," and then pretty uh, soon yeah. you you break it down, and all of a sudden. It, path becomes clear and it becomes easier and then more and more people can can go down that same path so it is breaking down and creating those new pathways and exactly um and is there a uh, a roadmap for this is the way to do it um no because it's everybody's individual and that's why you know you have to try different things um what's what's the I think appropriate, you know, is your, you know, your experience as brain injured is as we age, um, there's a lot of things that we do start forgetting that we do become more uh, susceptible. And the same things you're going through now would help anybody improve their memory by doing different things, by working different muscles, their different neural pathways, by trying yep. music. Uh, you were, you were, you were gifted with a great voice. So that is a, Perhaps that's another gift that you were given that will help you on your journey. Uh, it does. I, 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 I'm so bummed out that I, uh, I'm not able to sing in church anymore, uh, uh, at least in church. Uh, but I'm getting a new webcam set up, and uh, I'm going to be singing from my little trailer home here. And uh, I'll do it for church. I'll do it for anybody. I love to sing. It's great therapy. The takeaway message for me in our discussions is that uh, just because you get knocked down with a pretty significant injury doesn't mean you sit in the sidelines and give up. You get back in the game and you play to the best of your ability and you keep playing and you keep playing and you play it for the love of playing. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's, a, that, that's so inspiring to me and it, it applies at so many levels because there's so many reasons that people in your situation could say, well, screw it. I'm just going to give up. And yet you're proof positive that no, you don't have to. There is still a whole wide world out there to live and to contribute and to do things that perhaps nobody else can do. Oh, absolutely. And, and look, um, uh, uh, one of the reasons I ran cross country was that uh, I had, you know, Coke bottle glasses in high school, and so I couldn't see anything <laughs> if I had them off playing football. But but uh, when I did play football, uh, you know, I had great friends who were great passers and receivers and, and, and runners. And what I knew to do when I was out there, I knew my best job I could do was block the guy in front of me. <laughs> okay. You know, I, I could see, I could see him about 18 inches away and all I could do was hit him as hard as I could. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was my job. Okay. And you did it well. Eh, so, so. Okay. Yeah. I, I want to thank you for sharing your story and your insights. Um, if people want to uh, contact you or learn more about bison, where would they go? Well, I'm, I'm pretty active making snide comments on Facebook. Um, and um, so I do that. Uh, uh, um, do I give my email address or what do I? Look, if, you, I if, if you would like people to, to contact you by email. Sure. Uh, my email address is my, my full name. Brian A. Hansen, B-R-I-A-N-A-H-A-N-S-O-N, at hotmail.com. And, you know, send me a thing. I'll send you my little, uh, 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 the sheets I use for my daily do-done-data diaries, stuff like that. Um, 
Uh, I love to talk to people because, quite frankly, I'm kind of sequestered up here in a, in a, in a trailer in the middle of, no, uh, not in the middle of nowhere, but up in the upper peninsula of Michigan right now. And I hardly know any people because I died just before officially moving here <laughs> <laughs> or just after. Yeah. Um, and, and uh, um, you know, I like to share with people and I'd love to share what I have learned with other people to make their life better, too, because it'll make my life better, making your life, your life better. So if you want to make a connection with Brian, you know, give him a, drop an email um, and then, you know, you can share ideas. And, and the whole idea is, is that uh, it's about community and it's about connection. And uh, whenever we go through times of uh, trial, uh, we're better off doing it together than doing it alone. So There's no uh, I in team. Yep. Absolutely. So Brian, I want to thank you so much for, for being on the show and sharing your story. And uh, again, you have a wonderful day. I'm going to go walk my little doggy. God bless you. All right. God bless you. See you. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Never Too Late for Fitness Radio, hosted by Phil Ferris. To learn more about the guests or resources on our show today, or to listen to past episodes, go to nevertoolateforfitness.com.